Oh, I, everyone loves these. Whoa, this is way cool. This is way cool. Okay. Oh, here's something completely different. All right, everybody, get in the van. We're going to Michigan. Let's go. Wolverines. Is there an angry mammal in this box? I'm getting an X-Men kind of vibe, but there's only one Wolverine in X-Men. There's not a bunch. So the second most famous Wolverine I can think of is perhaps the Michigan Wolverines, which suggests to me that we're doing another Gems Across America. Shall I? Ooh. Ooh, these look kind of delicate. All right, if I had to guess, I would say that this is copper. If, I, if memory serves, Michigan is famous for its copper. In fact, uh, there was a period in time where in the US where Michigan was providing the vast majority of the country's copper. Uh, I think it was in the mid or late 1800s, Michigan was actually supplying 95% of the whole country's copper. Copper was a big thing. Copper mining kind of exploded there. And you can see why. The Northern Peninsula of Michigan, the one that I always forget about, is actually known as copper country because that's one of the places that you can find pure copper occurring. No other uh, elements, just copper, which is kind of unusual. Everywhere else around the world, copper usually is growing with other uh, sulfates and sulfides, but in copper country in Michigan, it occurs in its pure form, which is really unusual and pretty remarkable. Fun fact, actually, the history of copper, at least in Michigan, goes back quite a long ways. The Native Americans in Michigan actually mined copper and would use it for tools and weapons and all sorts of other things because it's a, it's a naturally occurring metal. You know, it wasn't uh, bronze, it wasn't steel, you didn't have to alloy it with anything. It was just occurred the way it was. So what's really cool about this dead leaf is that it is not a dead leaf, nor is it a dry piece of leather. It's also copper. Look how flat it is. It was literally dragged and smashed across a continent by glaciers uh, thousands of years ago, millions of years ago. And that's really cool. You just find it like this in this flattened sheet form. But while this one looks kind of dusty and musty, let's show you a bigger one and how nice it looks uh, when you clean it up. Boom. Look at the luster, that metallic luster, the beautiful kind of golden orange color. So this sheet, like the smaller one, was pressed and dragged and smashed by an enormous glacier. And it formed in Canada and was dragged and dragged and dragged across uh, the continent into Michigan, what is now Michigan at least. Copper can come in a lot of different forms and this flattened sheet is not the only way that it can form. And I'm told that one of these other forms is in this box. All right, we're going in blind. Ooh, look at that. So check this out. Uh, over here on this on this face, you can actually see the copper forming in little cubes, kind of reminiscent of pyrite, little pyrite cubes, except these guys are less gold and more kind of, well, copper colored. All right, we got another box here. Let's see what's inside. Oh, so you remember earlier when I mentioned that copper country was famous for copper growing in its pure form? Copper in that area also grows with silver, both in their pure forms. So this is a blend of pure copper and pure silver growing together. And this is, I don't believe this happens anywhere else in the world. The nickname for these copper silver uh, alloys is uh, half breed. So good on you, Michigan. Way to go. Dude, if this is another piece of copper, I'm gonna flip this table. Michigan has so much more to offer than just copper. This is just a copper episode. Okay, I'll stop there. This is way cool. This is way cool. Okay, so these guys kind of look like little agates or little geodes. They're actually called datalites. It's an interesting name and it actually comes from the Greek words for uh, to divide and stone. The datalites can be found in a lot of parts of the world, but once again, the ones from Michigan are particularly special. While it's not a specimen of copper outright, the datalite does owe its color to the presence of copper in it. Um, which is where we get this color banding. Most datalite, I think, around the world is sort of the color of this outer edge here, but the stuff in Michigan, because copper goes hard in Michigan, this stuff is actually colored by copper, giving it that really cool, the really cool zones of color from the, uh, from the brown orange all the way into this kind of like light, almost pinkish color. All right, what do we have here? Heavy. Whoa! So here's a, another example of a datalite, and it's, again, it's got that color banding here that we saw in the last specimen, but the color is completely different. I would wager that that is due to the relative absence of copper in this uh, specimen compared to the last one. The luster of these polished datalites is described as porcelainous because it, 
I mean, it really does look like porcelain, you know? Like a nice, refined toilet bowl. <laughs> the specimens keep coming in, they don't stop coming. Oh, here's something completely different. Boom, check that out. This, I believe, is what's called a pudding stone. They're called a pudding stone because whoever found it first decided that it looked like plum pudding, which, you know, if you find it first, finders namers is the rules as far as I understand. So this guy is a conglomerate of a lot of different stones and minerals. The red stuff that you can see here is jasper. The main body of it is comprised of a white quartzite. It starts out as sand and then it's metamorphized into quartzite under immense uh, heat and pressure. And there's some black chert in here as well as hematite. Uh, it's really, like I said earlier, it's just a conglomerate of, uh, of different stones and, and rocks. This guy was smashed and pressed together and forced by the, by the colossal weight of glaciers. Started in Canada and again was shoved out of Canada and pushed into Michigan, which is where we found it. The theory about this, the age of this pudding stone is that it was formed 2.3 billion years ago in Canada. Goodbye pudding stone. Hello. Oh, I, everyone loves these. This one even looks like Michigan, come on. So, euperlites are cyanite rocks. So it's, it's the sodalite content in these euperlites that gives them the remarkable trait that I'm about to show you. So check out the sodalite in action right now. What you're seeing, that orange glow, is the sodalite in these euperlites that is giving off that really unearthly, striking kind of yellow glow. That's how they found it. <laughs> it was that it was glowing on the ground amongst all the other rocks. And if you want to know more about how that went down, we actually did a video where we interviewed the man who discovered euperlites. So if you want to check that out, the link is down below. You thought we were done with copper. We are not, in fact, done with copper. Or rather, copper's not done with us. This specimen is really cool, first of all, because of all the really fine flakes of copper on it, but the really interesting part is right in here. So if you get, if you, if you, if you push in a little bit. So if you take a look right here, it looks like there's a sort of a hollowed cavity. That is where, and you can see the sort of, the, the lines that are inside there. That's where the physical drill uh, contacted this rock. And you can see the imprints of the drill bit in this copper cavity here. That's super cool. You love a specimen that tells a story and this one definitely does. So for today's closer look, I want you guys to really scrutinize the data light here, the really small one that we have here. You might think it's a geode of like agate or something, but this is data light found in Michigan. It gets its beautiful red color from the copper that is abundant in Michigan. So why don't we take a closer look? Guys, thank you for joining me on this next stop uh, across America. This time it was Michigan. Next time, what'll it be? You guys decide. And if I give you the aux cord, what road trip music are you gonna play? I trust you, okay? Don't screw it up. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on our next stop across America. Thanks for watching.